I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this video is gonna be a little bit difficult for me to make. It's just gonna take a second, okay? The topic of today's video is, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm just gonna go with that. Like, <laughs> I'm sad. And this week in particular, I feel like I've been stressing about a lot of things that are out of my control. Most of all, I feel like I haven't been doing enough for myself and I've been neglecting myself because I fear the perception of other people and them seeing me fail. And if you're new here, this is the Improvement for Imbeciles podcast. This is where I share ways in which I'm getting my shit together so that you can get your shit together. Over the last week or so, I've had all these realizations surrounding sadness and trying to run away from sadness. So this video is going to be how to actually handle sadness and the feeling that you're not doing enough. I don't talk about this often, but I have ADHD and as someone with ADHD, I feel like my entire life has been an uphill battle of feeling like I'm doing great and then feeling like I'm not doing so great. It's like the simplest tasks like staying focused or being organized will often get pushed to the side and I'll hyper focus on something that's completely unrelated and that's honestly what my YouTube channel is for me. My mind races constantly with thoughts and worries and feeling like I'm not doing good enough while simultaneously pushing myself to the greatest extent on everything else like work, school, YouTube, literally everything. I'll put my all into everything I'm doing without recognizing how I'm actually feeling. I've had periods where I felt really, really down and depressed and extremely alone and I've doubted my potential and my capabilities. And through those periods, sometimes I've been impulsive and decided to do something that has made my relationships worse. There were so many times growing up where I didn't feel like I could emotionally depend on people and actually share all of these struggles I was dealing with. I became so detached from my sadness and depression that I almost became numb and I felt like nothing was really worth it. Holding all of this in made me feel so isolated and hopeless, honestly. And if I had someone to talk to about these things, I honestly would have been way better off. Simply having a non-judgmental third party would have helped me so much in learning strategies and coping mechanisms to help with my ADHD and minimize my symptoms. But don't worry, if you're anything like me, I have a solution. Today's sponsor, BetterHelp, is an online therapy platform that connects you with a licensed professional therapist from the comfort of your own home. Their virtual sessions make it extremely easy and convenient for you to get in contact with a professional who can help you with any personal challenges or things you might be experiencing. First things first, go to betterhelp.com slash Natalie Etched and fill out a brief questionnaire. BetterHelp will then match you to a certified therapist who is well equipped to provide you personal care, usually within 48 hours. From there, you can have a video chat session, phone calls, or messaging conversations with your therapist on your own schedule. As someone with ADHD, I would always accidentally miss my in-person therapy appointments and it would be a $200 fee just for missing it. BetterHelp is a lot more convenient. You don't have to drive 30 minutes out for a therapist you don't even like. And if you don't like your therapist, you can easily switch to a different professional who fits your needs more at no extra cost to you. BetterHelp's network has a huge range of specialties so they can pair you with the exact person who knows your struggles. Maybe you need help managing anxiety or you feel like you're not doing enough or you're like me and you have ADHD. BetterHelp will find you someone who can actually understand you and your needs. If I had a resource like BetterHelp years ago, I would have been able to manage my ADHD impulsivity a lot healthier than I did. I can't recommend trying BetterHelp enough. Visit betterhelp.com slash Natalie Etched or simply choose Natalie Etched during the sign up process to get started and receive a special discount on your first month of online therapy. Without further ado, thank you to BetterHelp and let's get on to the reason why I'm actually sad. Um, first of all, I lost my job. <laughs> I lost my job, guys. And I feel really silly because, you know, I made a whole entire video talking about how much I loved my job, but they fired me. <laughs> They fired me. Honestly though, I don't know why I'm so sad about it though, because I'm about to reach 100K on YouTube. I'm actually making good money from what I'm doing right now, but I think it's because I recognized why I do the things I do and how there was an actual attachment to me clocking in. And there's a lot of other reasons why I'm feeling a little bit sad too. But the first thing I want you to do if you're clicking on this video feeling sad, acknowledge and let yourself feel sad. 
Like, stop trying to find a reason for the sadness without actually acknowledging and feeling the sadness as a whole. It's one thing if you actually have an explanation, like maybe someone passed or something happened in your life, you know, you lost your job. That's okay if you already know the explanation, but oftentimes, sometimes when sadness comes up, we automatically go, well, why am I sad? I should be happy. Why am I sad? Why do I feel this way? And what you're not realizing you're doing by trying to find an explanation before or even acknowledging or feeling how you feel is subconsciously you feel like you need a reason to be sad and that you can't just feel the emotion. You don't always have to have a reason for being sad, for being in the dumps, for feeling like you're not doing enough. You don't always have to have some type of explanation. And until you let yourself feel it, you cannot heal it. There's no way around feeling the emotion. Feel that shit. Okay, feel the emotion. And this is something I really had to realize because I was starting to invalidate myself, you know, like, well, why am I sad? I'm gonna focus on my YouTube. When the reason I was sad about this job wasn't because of the actual job itself. It was because I was prioritizing what other people were thinking about me and I was interpreting them firing me as me not being good enough. Despite the fact that it was a temporary position and I didn't even wanna work there anymore. Think of your emotions, your feelings, or any negativity you feel as kind of like that little kid that just wants to play. You know how kids are when they want attention. They'll do anything they can to make you acknowledge them. They'll scream at you. They'll come up to you. They'll pull your leg. They'll jump around the corner and scare you. Like that is your emotion. It's like your inner child. The intention of your inner child is it wants to play with you. It wants to feel acknowledged. It wants to feel heard. But the way it goes about feeling heard sometimes evokes emotions that make you mad, make you sad, make you scared. The more that you try to run from it, the more it will find you and the more it will annoy you. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't have a logical explanation for my feelings because emotions aren't supposed to be logical. You just feel them. They just exist. Stop trying to find some logical reason for your emotions. Emotions are illogical. So for me in this situation, I started feeling really sad and then all of a sudden I started invalidating myself and that just wasn't the way to go. So I stopped myself and I was just like, it's okay for me to feel sad. It's okay to feel like something you hoped for didn't work out the way you'd expected it to. And so another reason I was feeling this sadness was this feeling of not doing enough, yet feeling like I'm doing everything for everyone. When you feel like you're not doing enough, but you keep overextending yourself to others, it is your reluctance to see the value that you bring other people that is making you overextend yourself because you don't actually see the value in your own time. You don't see the the value in taking care of yourself first. But what if you're not doing something for other people? Like what if you just feel like you're not doing enough period. Are you not doing enough or are you not choosing the habit with the highest reward? Being happy isn't the cure to being sad. That might seem weird, but like being happy is not the cure to relieving sadness because a lot of the things that bring us temporary happiness are not rooted in something that's going to sustain us long-term. They are going to cause more sadness over time. Are you going to feel a temporary feeling of happiness by staying in your bed all day and scrolling on TikTok? Yes. Are you going to feel a temporary feeling of happiness by going and texting your ex just because you're sad? Are you going to feel a temporary feeling of happiness for overeating? Yeah, but you see, that's what I mean. Happiness is not the cure to sadness. The sadness is still gonna be there at the end of the day. The emptiness is still gonna be there at the end of the day. The loneliness, all of these negative feelings, the anger, all of these things are still going to be there at the end of the day if you don't choose to face them and recognize their purpose. Because we're not searching for happiness when we want to escape sadness. We are searching for purpose. Happiness is temporary and we all know this. We feel good in the moment and it's wonderful, you know, like you can be happy around anyone. You can make yourself feel happy by going and buying something. You can go on YouTube and look up cat videos or you can watch my videos and you'll be happy. Subscribe. <laughs> but no, you get what I mean though? Like you can find things to make you happy temporarily. But what you're looking for is purpose. You're not choosing the habit with the highest reward. Therefore, you're still sad. You're not craving happiness when you're sad. Happiness is not the cure to sadness. The cure is to transform that sadness into purpose 
and something that can do something for you. And that's why when you choose to do something that makes you happy in the moment, you're not going to always be happy for long because happiness is a concept that is often weaponized against us because we think that we're supposed to be 100% all the time. No human feels 100% all the time. You will go through periods of sadness. Sadness is inevitable. And the sooner you realize that sadness is inevitable, the sooner you will start neutralizing the way you feel towards sadness and not neglecting it like you neglect your inner child. That child that just keeps saying, hey, 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 let me play, let me play, let me play. Like that child just wants to be acknowledged and loved and you are neglecting it because you would rather feel numb. You would rather put on a fake smile. You would rather act like everything is okay than to acknowledge stuff that you've been suppressing for possibly your entire life. Despite the fact that that stuff that you've been suppressing your entire life can truly turn into your purpose, can be the reason that you help people. For example, if you're dealing with the death of a family member, I dealt with the death of my Oma last Last year and it was very difficult for me because honestly not having her in my life was like one of those honestly daunting realizations that I'm growing up but what really helped me get over the grief of going through a family member's death is learning to live for them and appreciate the people in your life before they're actually gone you never know when you're going to die you just know that you're going to die and you never know when people around you are going to die take some perspective and recognize how this sadness can be used to your advantage in some way shape or form you can start to actually appreciate it for what it is and what it's trying to teach you you are not being punished by your emotions they are just there they just exist you can't control them you can only control your reaction to them and as soon as you realize that it's like a light bulb moment because you realize okay i can control my reactions to an extent but i can't control how i actually feel how i feel is how i feel so before going into any explanation of, oh, I'm sad because of this and X, Y, Z and why am I sad? Acknowledge that you're sad. And sometimes that's just it. I'm sad today. That's all it has to be if you want it. Another thing I really recognized about sadness in this process I was going through the last week and a half is associating sadness with feeling alone and isolation and a lot of these common feelings you felt throughout your entire life. The reason we hate being sad is because it's so familiar. All of a sudden, you're thinking about all of these various things from the past. And in some ways, you haven't accepted that those things have actually happened to you. Especially if they're things that are very, very deep within you, you might feel a surge of emotion in the moment because you didn't recognize that a situation actually hurt you until way later. There's a delay because of how serious the situation was. And honestly, I experience this a lot. Sometimes I don't really recognize that a situation hurts me until way later or it'll come in waves, but you are never truly alone in your emotions. And I know that's hard to hear because sometimes we like to be alone in our emotions. It's like, oh, well, like I'm the only person that's feeling this way and nobody gets me. And it's sometimes we get into that victim mindset because it's easier for us to go to those conclusions. And it gives ourselves like a false sense of superiority almost. Like nobody is dealing with things like I'm dealing with them, you know, nobody understands me. And that might be true that nobody understands you, but you're never letting them understand you. You're never reaching out and seeing if someone is actually feeling how you're feeling. Also, even if you're alone, you have yourself. Be that for yourself. Hear yourself out. If you don't want to open up to other people, that's one thing. You know, you can't always trust everyone, but be able to look at yourself in the mirror and genuinely say like, I know you're sad right now, but you got this. I got me. Like genuinely look at yourself in the mirror. This is something that I heard from a Leo Skeppy episode, but it's so true. Like look at yourself in the mirror and see that person in the mirror and go, okay, this person is experiencing exactly what I'm experiencing. Almost separate yourself from that person because it's like a weight lifts off your shoulders because like I'm experiencing this. It's like there's me and then there's inner me. Be able to nurture that inner you and go, I don't like this emotion, but we're in it together. I don't like having to look at myself but at least I'm looking at myself with myself. Something that really, really helps me is writing a letter to an emotion if it's really on my mind. For example, if you're going through a breakup, you know, write a letter to your feelings for this person. Dear anger, dear sadness, dear attachment, I appreciate you and I see you for what you are and go into how you're feeling about that emotion. Um, also, poetry is made usually through sadness. Like a lot of the best poetry is made out of these 
deep, deep emotions of dissatisfaction and what a lot of people would say is negative. A lot of those emotions are specifically made through sadness and through anger and through all of these emotions that we feel like we always have to suppress, but they're there for a reason. I don't agree with just like going into hyper positivity and acting like everything is fine. Again, happiness is not the cure to feeling sad. It's turning your sadness into some type of purpose and expressing it through art, through journaling, through body movement. Sometimes the sadness that you're experiencing, you're meant to feel in order to spark a change within you to get you to where you're supposed to be. Really trust in yourself that you are capable of this emotion. You wouldn't be feeling it if you weren't capable of it. You wouldn't even have it. You wouldn't even think about it. Think of a world where you were always happy, right? Like you never had problems. You can't think of that world because it doesn't exist. It exists in your mind and it exists in people that you envy because you feel like they don't have problems too. But guess what? Some people just hide their problems better than others. Some people are more vulnerable about their problems than others. Just because I'm here sharing with you guys how sad I felt about losing my job and feeling hopeless and feeling like, you know, am I going to fail? I feel like so many people don't talk about these emotions that I talk about on my channel, but just because I can speak on it doesn't mean that everyone will and doesn't mean that everyone will admit to how the world is, that we all feel these things and we will feel these things at some point in our life or another. You don't need to compare yourself to someone else's emotions for yours to be valid. Sit on that because sometimes you'll compare yourself to someone who has less than you in order to feel like, you know, I'm so ungrateful for having this feeling. Or you'll look up at someone who has more than you and you're like, you know, I just wish I was like them because I wouldn't be feeling this way when that isn't even true. Lean into the human experience. We are experiencing emotion because our life is emotion. Emotion is energy in motion. We are living, we are breathing, and we are meant to be sad. We are meant to be sad and we are meant to feel things that we don't want to feel. Feel. And instead of trying to find some reason, allow yourself to be for once. Instead of trying to invalidate yourself and you know, why am I feeling this way and blah, 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 blah. Just let yourself be. You'll start to become like the people you grew up around telling you to not feel a certain thing because it's bad. That will be your inner voice. And when you hear that voice, you need to ask yourself where it's coming from. Not everything that you think in your inner monologue is you. Sometimes it's another person person's idea or concept of reality that you adopted and that's actually holding you back. When something in your life isn't working anymore, that isn't a cue to feel horrible and to feel like, oh, well, I shouldn't be feeling this way and what's wrong with me? That's not a cue to blame yourself. That's a cue for you to go inward and accept yourself. So for the rest of this podcast, you guys, I'm just gonna be going over ways and things that have helped me actually recognize what I was feeling and turn it into purpose. Number one, is there something that you can do in the moment that will alleviate a lot of the sadness? This works if if it's something that is a problem in your life. For example, if you and your boyfriend broke up and it's really, really sad and you keep texting each other being like, oh baby, blah, 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 blah. He keeps saying baby to you when y'all aren't babies anymore. <laughs> You get what I mean though. Like you guys aren't together anymore. <laughs> you guys aren't babies anymore. <laughs> A good solution would be, hey, I don't want to talk to you anymore or even block him. If you aren't taking the steps you need to take in order to move into healing, you are denying yourself the healing process and you are actually addicted to the sadness itself. You will not be ready to move forward until you actually feel it and until you actually take out whatever thing is causing you so much pain. It's kind of like a splinter right? If you get a splinter in your finger, you first have to remove the wood from your finger in order to allow the wound to heal. If you keep it in, it's just going to get worse and super infected. And it's the same with anything in life too. Like if there's a solution that will make you feel probably worse in the moment, but better long term, sometimes it's best for you to take those steps to get yourself to a better mental place, even if temporarily it'll make you feel worse. Number two, limit instant gratification. And what I mean by this is start choosing the habit with the highest reward. I think it's so important for 
you to recognize when your habits that you're doing for the short term are actually causing your downfall long term. I used to be in something that I like to call a struggle mindset, which I thought that I was just meant to struggle. You know, I was kind of addicted to the sadness and the numbness itself. And that's because I didn't really feel like happiness would ever last. And that when I got happiness, I would always self-sabotage it for myself in some way, shape or form because I wasn't comfortable just being content with where I was at. Deep down, I didn't feel like I was worthy of good things and good experiences. Therefore, I was always in these situations that I would play a part in, but I didn't want to acknowledge that I actually played a part in them because it was so painful for me to actually recognize why I was attached to things that were actually causing me harm in some ways. So even if it's small things like cleaning your room every day or making sure you go to the gym, sacrificing one hour of your day to do something that you don't want to do but it'll make you feel better in the long run is something that is so important for long-term mental success. You'll be able to handle the hard times a lot better if you have habits in place that really sustain those times where you're in a funk and where you feel like you're not doing enough and where you feel like, you know, I'm just really sad this week. Number three is to journal. Journaling is so extremely important if you want to get in touch with your emotions because again, if you're the type of person who's in more of this numbness, oftentimes you're so detached to the emotion that you can't even feel it because of how painful it is. I have this journal called the Better Everyday Journal and it has prompts every single day that are kind of like shadow work prompts. Doing something like this will give you space to actually feel your emotions but feel them in more of a controlled sense where it's not like it's overflowing and all of a sudden you're feeling all of these things and now you're overwhelmed because you were so detached from your emotions before. Being able to have times throughout the day where you're mindful and you specifically think about something that hurt you or bring up a trauma from the past that didn't really get resolved. Taking some time to just write about it and say how you really feel without judgment is something that has really, really helped me, especially since oftentimes I'm in my own world and I'm thinking about so many things and I'll realize that my mental state is going down the drain and it's like something of a mental check for me, you know? Like, how is my mental state right now? Number four, take a shower. <laughs> I know this is like a silly one, but like go take a shower. Like I feel like when you're sad, it's so difficult to like get out of bed and go to the shower. But like when you go and take a shower, it's almost a little bit healing in the sense that you are washing off the emotion from your body. Like literally visualize yourself washing off the sadness from your body. And when you get out, even if you're still sad, you'll just feel a lot better and it's good to take a shower, especially if, especially if you're in a depressive mood and you're just sitting in your bed doing nothing, go take a shower. And number five, this is the last one I'm gonna leave you guys with. When one door closes, another one opens. And really sit with that. Because oftentimes we feel like when one thing ends in our life, it's the end of the world. But life will go on and you will be fine. And I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but genuinely lean into that idea that like you will be okay. This emotion isn't meant to punish you, it's meant to prepare you for something better. With that being said, you guys, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's Improvement for Imbeciles podcast. Again, be sure to go check out betterhelp.com slash Natalie Etch. It helps out the channel and it also helps you guys get a discount on the mental health care that you deserve. Be sure to check out all of my social medias, Instagram at mylifeasetch, TikTok and Snapchat at Natalie Etched. Also, I'm going to be doing a giveaway at 100,000 subscribers. It's literally it's so close. So please be sure to subscribe, like this video so that other people can see it. I'm also posting more Instagram content talking about magnetism. So if you guys are interested, please go check out my Instagram and social medias. But I won't ramble on any longer. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week and don't be sad. Get inspired and love yourself for exactly what you are and be able to feel your emotions. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Bye y'all.